Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Views with me, Carburetor. Today, we are going to be looking at the mod station. I know, two episodes in one week. What makes you guys so lucky? I used to do this all the time. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I figured I would go over what I've chosen to do my mods at in-game. I know I've been talking about this for a while, and I figured I would touch on it. So we'll start in the very first one. Well, first off, actually, why don't we talk about the mod station? This is the World of Warships official mod pack. This is officially what you are able to work with in World of Warships. These are legal mods. These are not illegal. There are no aimbots or anything in here. This is, I forget who makes this, but this is something that World of Warships and Wargaming are okay with. So let's start with here. I typically put max speed of, of the target, but that's just a small little tidbit of information, and I don't typically find it there. The rest of the stuff is pretty much is pretty much cosmetic. A lot of this stuff is cosmetic, a lot of dynamic and static crosshairs. I don't run the fancy crosshairs, I typically run a pretty bog standard crosshair. Moving in to markers, don't really run any. I kind of run a little bit bog stock with that. Same with hip icons. And if you have a weaker PC, the only thing I would really recommend with this is to hit the remove camo button because that will make your game run just a little bit smoother. Not much, a little bit smoother. This is where things really get interesting. Score timer, big, big, big first one that I would say you need to get. For a long time, this was broken and I didn't realize just how valuable this tool is in game. I would definitely recommend running this, uh, this score timer. You can run the reload timer. This puts a little reload icon on your shells, but I find that it is impractical. Radar timer. Definitely, definitely, definitely should have this. And I'll tell you why. Because if you know that the radar is coming from a Petro, you can literally time it. When it's coming to 17, 18 seconds, you know, okay, radar's coming off. Perfect. If it's on a Des Moines or whatever, and you can time it and go, okay, let's see how long it lasts. Oh, it lasted for 52 seconds. Okay, he's running the extended radar package. You can learn more about your enemy. The whole way I run these mod packs is to give myself information. Give yourself the information you need to survive you can't do damage if you're dead this number grass is just something i kind of picked up it is really nice to have when you get to your post battle screens this tells you what your uh, missions are if you've completed any how far you are in the mission and so on and so forth kind of nice to have because it keeps you updated detection timer after main battery firing Definitely should get this because you can use this to your advantage. If you know you're going to be spotted for 20 seconds after you fired, instead of paying attention to the little timer up in the right-hand corner, the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you can pay attention to this. Makes it really easy to kind of track, you know, when you're going to be detected, when you're going to go undetected, how you're going to be detected, so on and so forth. Running lights. A lot of people don't like this this mod. They think it's a little game breaking. I tend to agree with it, but more information is always better. Advanced HP bar. This kind of just helps me with my uh, with my healing to kind of know. Okay, I should repair or I shouldn't repair. I don't say rely on it, but especially if you're relatively new to the game. I would use this because it helps you kind of learn how to how to heal damage. I didn't know how to heal damage until I really became a little bit more serious just about a year or two ago. Um, only then did I really realize just how much I need information like that because I didn't understand how it worked. This is more with that regen assist. Oh, this is actually the regen assist. The advanced HP. Okay, this just gives you a little bit more indication on what's going on in your ship, such as fires and recovery and so on and so forth. 
Uh, damage meter, this is really nice. My number one rule in game, besides surviving, is shoot at the person who's shooting at you. If you are in a Des Moines and you are farming a GK and the GK is ignoring you and all of a sudden you start taking damage, okay, who am I taking damage from? Where am I taking damage from? Okay, now I know that the Hiragumo is off in this direction. Let's say off my port quarter. Okay, I now know where he is. I can anticipate torpedoes. I can see where I can figure out, okay, he's over there. He's not going to be off to my starboard. So the ship off to my starboard must be the gearing. I'm just making up names right now. But you can use it to determine where people are. This is a little game breaky. But again, information is key. Secondary armament, never really needed it. Ship telegraph, the one that it comes with is pretty fine. Companion, this just lets you know when you're uh, when you're running your campaigns, what your campaigns are doing, and it helps you keep track of it. Very similar to the number grass. So I actually think these two should be closer together, but so on and so forth. Ship info panel. This lets you know so much about your about yourself and your enemy. I have it selected for my enemy. I put it right up here by my map and it lets me know what their viewing radius is, what their top speed is, what their range is, and their reload. That's the little clock by it. It reload it has a range, his main battery has a range of 15.4 kilometers and it reloads in 7.5 seconds. His torps have a 10 kilometer reload, reloads in 72 seconds. This helps me keep track of my enemies. So if I'm going against a Z-52 in my Des Moines and he just fired his uh, his torpedoes, I can know, okay, he's not going to have his torpedoes for 20 seconds after I get there. Perfect. That'll give me enough time to kill him. Uh, these are just different. Oh, this is actually, this is actually something I want to cover. Oftentimes, you'll see in the upper bar, I have, I can say that, hey, the Nicholas is on low health. This helps me know that. This helps me know what the what my what my fellow ships are at, and what the enemy ships are at. This helps. Sorry, I'm yawning. I'm a little tired. This helps me know a little bit more about who I'm going against. If I, there's a Haragumo sitting in smoke, I don't know if he's if he's strong or if he's weak. Well, this will let me know. Okay, last time I saw him, he was full health. Maybe don't charge him or this can let me know okay he was on really 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 low health last time i saw him maybe i should try and kill this guy and then mini map modifications i just added this little battle frame mini map tell the truth i'm actually going to get rid of it because don't need it it's kind of kind of doesn't work that well Uh, nothing to do with the advanced chat here. Really don't know what this is all about. Doesn't really say. Adds the name of the mes message sender ship to the chat line. That would actually be kind of nice, actually. Let you know who you're, who you're talking to. But typically, I'm pretty good with that. But you know what? I'm actually going to add it because more information is always better. Smoke timer. I've already got a smoke timer in game. If you don't know how to activate that, I should probably go over that uh, one of these days with you guys. But you just turn on full informational display and it lets you know when your smoke is dissipating. This one is very crucial. This I use for uh, angling my ship for when I'm going against somebody. It shows the enemy ship on top and it shows your ship down below. So if you are in the Montana going against the Yamato... I know I want to be at about 25 to 30 degrees angled to him. So I know I want to be at a little bit both before 30 degrees. This really helps because it it really is a tool to be able to use the enemy's shells against them, especially if they're firing AP. I can't tell you how, how much AP shells I bounce because of this. This is a big, 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 big help. There is a um, there is a add-on in here. I have not been able to find it. I don't know what it's called, but it does let you know what the enemy's uh, radar 
uh, duration and range is. I don't know where it is. I thought it would have been in here with the enemies, but it's not included. Going in here, Scrooge is definitely something, especially for the uh, for the Scringe and Fire, who doesn't want to waste all of his doubloons in game. This is definitely something I would recommend putting on. Chip win rates. This helps you manage your win rate if you care about it. I kind of do. I kind of don't. I have more important things to worry about, but this is kind of this does kind of help me where hey, I really 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 need to win this rank battle. I'm in contention. I have the last star. What ship should I take? Oh, look. My Stalingrad has a 64% win rate. I'm going to take that ship because obviously it does well for me. Other ships, like, oh, let's say the Haragumo. I'd love the Haragumo. The Haragumo is one of my favorite ships. I have a 40% win rate and ranked with that. Yeah, I'm not going to be winning any audiences with that. So I don't typically run it in rank too much. Probably should. That's how I get better at it. But moving on. This just kind of helps me organize all of my ships. This is also how I knew that the Dalian was coming out. Because I was actually able to look at and see the Dalian before it came out. This also helps me see which ships I might be missing from my little collection. If those of you guys who don't know, I'm kind of trying to collect as many ships in the game as possible. I'm not nearly at some people. Some people have probably over 500 ships. But you know what? This is always fun to have. This is kind of just a... This kind of helps you with your commander distribution points. Kind of helps, kind of doesn't. I don't really use it anymore. I don't think I would miss it. Modify flags. This is probably the only cosmetic add-on I use. And that's because I really like the larger flags. Especially the Rising Sun flag. I love that flag. It looks so nice on my Yamato. Other than that, I think this is all done. Modified ports. Don't really care about that. Mo ship commanders. Don't really care about that. Right awards to the ship. Don't really care about that. Modified consumables icon, don't really care about that. Moving on to this, remove fog and glare. This helps a lot. The better you can see, the better you can shoot. The better you can shoot, the more damage you're going to do. Now, for some reason, I actually do better without the calm C. I do better with the regular C. I don't know why. I just do. It helps. Remove flame frame. This kind of bugs me when you're on fire and it makes your entire screen look like it's on fire. That kind of bugs me. So, way it goes. Localizations. This kind of just adds everything in millimeters and inches. So if I'm looking at something and I go, oh, it's, you know, it's uh, 152 millimeters. What is that? Oh, it's six inches. Cool. Helps me. Oh, it's a 460 millimeter gun. Wait, I thought the... I thought the Yamato had had 18 inch guns. Why is it saying that the Ohio has 18 inch guns when they're 457s, but the Yamato has 460s? Well, the Yamatos are actually 18.1 inches. They call them 18s for lazy reasons. Kind of helps, kind of doesn't. I find it cool, but I'm also one of the few countries that is still using the Imperial system which is i'm not gonna lie kind of stupid at times especially since every single thing that i work on in real life has metric in it that's basically the rest of it you can add in sound mods you can damage clean you can get rid of the uh, damage effect on your ship i'd much rather i would much rather know what parts of my ships are damaged and what aren't uh there was a mod on here to limit the FPS that the game runs at. I kind of wish they still had it. Because I had it set to 30 FPS. And it helped. Because if you never load your computer. Your computer almost never glitches. Think about it. If you're running at. I'm, I'm trying to use a. I'm trying to use a really good analogy. Uh, and I can't really think of one. Without sounding like an engine nerd. But. Basically, it just it prevents your computer from loading up and getting stressed and overheating. It just it helps in my opinion. But ever since I got rid of it, I haven't had it. So that's that for the mod station. I did mention the uh, informational displays. A lot of people don't know about that. So let's hop into game right quick and I can show you guys how to set up your informational displays. So here we are in game. Let's go up into our uh, settings tab right up there in the upper left hand corner 
So I have just all of these uh, settings right, all my uh, graphics settings set a little bit custom. I do have them set kind of high. My computer can handle it, but one setting that I really wish they'd had in here is that FPS limiter. It would really, really, really help. And I'm going to feel like a schmuck if I've missed it because I didn't know it existed. But as you can see, I'm running a pretty high setup. But we're not actually going to look at here. We're going to go over to controls. Now, terrain hit indicator, I typically leave that on. Select crosshair. Might as well show you guys the crosshair I use. I use this one right here. I think you guys have seen it before, but this is the one that I'm used to. This is the one that I like. If you get used to a different to a different uh, crosshair, that's fine. That's perfect. That's dandy. Good for you. Honestly, everybody has their own style. This is the style I like. Back into controls. Uh, collision avoidance system, I typically turn it off just because of the fact that it tends to glitch out from time to time. This is where you need to look, though. I turn this to full. The alternative interface mode, I turn to full. This lets you... This gives you a lot of information in game. This lets you know who you're playing with. This lets you know who you're playing against. This really, really helps. You can also uh, put this on. Always display the timers for fire flooding and other modifications, but there's already timers on with the full interface mode. Display team lineups. This, this basically is all this, I believe. If I turn that off, never mind. This lets you know where your smokescreen boundaries are. This is your smokescreen timer, which is really nice. I don't know what the, all the scenarios of the training room are, but whatever. And skip video at game launch if you want to get rid of it. Counter for damage upon your spotting. That's just how much uh, damage you're spotting for up here in the upper right-hand corner. Kind of lets you know what you're doing. Counter for potential damage lets you know how much you're screwing with the enemy. I kind of like that. And battle chat, definitely. Uh, zoom indicator, all this other stuff, you know, it, it's kind of it's kind of self-explanatory, but this is how I typically like to set it, and this is how I run it. I could probably turn this down a little bit, the sound quality, but for right now, it's okay. Uh, don't enable voice chat because I have Discord. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know, two episodes in one week. I might even get a third with the Dalian. Who knows? I'm going to be playing her tomorrow when I'm well rested. But anyway, take care, stay safe, and I will see you all next time.